Hello, my name is Eric Bach, and welcome to another session of Techniques brought to you by NEI. In today's session, we'll cover how to create an ASCII export setup in Pathfinder Office. Okay, we're going to start off by going to the Start menu. We're going to go to All Programs. We're going to scroll down a list here and look for the Trimble folder. And inside the Trimble folder, we want to find GPS Pathfinder Office. And then finally, we want to choose the GPS Pathfinder Office utility. Now, most of y'all probably have a Pathfinder Office icon on your desktop that you can just double click and start up. All right, when the project opens, you have the ability to select the project, create a new one. We're just going to stick with the project that's already opened and I'm going to click on OK. And to start out, we're going to click on File, choose Open, and I'm going to open up a file that's been corrected that has some points in it already. So in order to export our data, we need to go to the Utilities menu, scroll down, and choose Export. And the first thing we need to go to is the Choose and Export Setup. And I'm going to click the drop-down arrow, and I am looking for Sample Configurable ASCII Setup. I'm going to choose this. Now you could go right into here, click on Properties, but I don't like to edit the Trimble samples. So I'm going to click on the word New, and I'm going to change the name here to NEI Demo. And we're going to click on OK. That comes up with our export properties. We're going to go through each one of these tabs. The first tab is Data. And it asks what kind of data or what type of data do you want to export. Typically, I go with the default, export all features. But if you look in the list here, you have all kind of options, new features only, updated features, etc. Everything else in here, we'll leave alone. I will make one point here. If you had the option in TerraSync for between feature logging turned on, you would have these not in feature position show up in your map. If you would like to export them out, you could check this include not in feature positions, and you have the ability to export out those positions as individual point features or as a line group. You can think of these as like a breadcrumb trail or a track log. We don't have that type of data, so I'm going to shut this off. The next tab over is output. The default here is to combine all input files and output to the project folder. The problem with this is if you export data daily or weekly, you may be overriding data. I like to choose the second option, which creates its own individual folder every time you export the data out. The next tab over is Attributes. You can think of this as the metadata for the GPS. I do like to add some things in here. For example, PDOP, if the data was corrected and how it was corrected the type of receiver. You can choose date and time. And scroll down the list here. I like to use the data file name, maybe the data dictionary. That's just my personal preference. But all of this information will get appended or added to your attributes. I'm not going to select position here or vertical. I will do the precision. But I don't do the position and the vertical because of the height because that's going to be set up when we configure the ASCII setup. OK, the next tab over is Units. The default is Use Current Display. I always like to lock this down, so I choose Use Export Units. I click on the Change button, and I go in here and set this up. So I know every time I export out, these units are locked in. And I'm going to use Survey Feet, Square Feet, and Miles Per Hour. And when I'm finished, I'm going to hit OK. Everything else, I don't change in here. Position Filter tab. I usually leave this a default as well. I will like to point out that there's a section in here, Include Positions That Are. And you'll notice everything is checked here except for uncorrected. Trimble would prefer you to collect data and have some type of correction on it. So the reason uncorrected is unchecked, because we don't want to send out data that could be up to 30 foot off which is autonomous GPS or uncorrected data. So if you ever export out data and it says no features were exported, you may want to check that you process the file 
or if you absolutely need uncorrected data, you can come and check this box. Okay, the next tab over is coordinate system. Again, I like to lock this down, so I'm going to click on Use Export Coordinate System. I'm going to click on the word Change, and you would set this up to, as to what you need. I'm going to use U.S. State Plane in this example. Arkansas North, NAT 83 CONUS is my datum. I would like to have mean sea level using the most recent geoid model, which is 12A CONUS. And then my coordinate units, this is very important. We have feet and survey feet. In the Trimble software, feet is usually international feet. So I recommend that anybody using state plane, and that's most states, will use U.S. survey feet for state plane. And I'll do the same for my altitude. If you don't know, uh, check and see what type of units your state plane uses. When we're finished, we'll click on OK. And then finally, our last tab is this configurable ASCII. And we need to come in here, and we're going to create a new template. We're going to give the template a name. I like to use P for point, N for northing, E for easting, Z for elevation, and D for description. This is a common format that surveyors use. I'm going to click on the word OK. And now it comes up with our template. First thing at the top left is output file extension. In here, you can use ASCII, which is ASC. You could use text. You could use CSV. You could use XLS. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you want to put in here. I'll go with ASC. If you want to have your template headings, so your point, northing, easting, all that as your headings, you would check this box, use template heading. And you have the option as your delimiters. You can use comma, space, tab, colon, semicolon, and there's a few more in the list here. I'm going to use the default as comma. As far as text, I don't like the quotes in text. I'm going to choose none, but some software may require you to have quotes around your text. And the last thing here is my macro palette. This is how you build the ASCII setup. So I'm going to start out with feature ID, and then I'm going to choose northing, easting, MSL, and attributes. So that's going to store all the information that I need. And we can apply this to points, lines, and areas. I'm going to click on OK. It's going to give me a warning about my attributes are going to be exported with every position of lines and area features. That's fine. I'm going to click OK again. It brings me back to this configurable ASCII tab. And I will point out at the top you have file options. So you can have it create a ASCII, a separate ASCII file as each type of feature, or you can have them all in the same set of files. I'm going to use the default, and we're going to click on OK. Now everything's ready to go. So you need to make sure you have a file in here. You can tell it where you want this file to go to. And then when you're finished, you click on OK. And it's going to go through and do the export. In this example, one file was read. 1,595 positions were read. 61 features were created. And 61 features were exported. This bottom one here is where you really need to watch out 61 features exported. If you didn't have your corrected data in here, it might say zero features exported. And when it's finished, you just click on Close. This concludes today's technique session. Please visit neigps.com for more videos, FAQs, and information on upcoming trainings. Thank you and have a great day.